One of the most obscure and extraordinary tactics used by the Soviet Union in World War II was the training and deployment of anti-tank dogs. This strategy of using dogs as an explosive anti-tank homing device, both innovative and desperate, saw dogs being trained to carry explosives in order to destroy enemy tanks. We'll delve into the origins of this program and how these dogs were trained, the technical challenges of their deployment in combat, as well as their impact on the battlefield. The idea of using dogs as a military tool against tanks originated in the Soviet Union in the 1930s. The Red Army looked for creative ways to counter the growing strength of tank units as the threat of armored warfare grew. This led to the development of the anti-tank dog program. A specialized dog training facility was set up on the outskirts of Moscow with the goal of teaching dogs to attack enemy tanks. The development of a comprehensive training program was aided by the recruitment of top animal scientists. The lack of professional dog trainers in the Red Army led to the employment of hunters, police trainers, and even circus animal trainers. The breed primarily used was the German Shepherd, known for its intelligence and trainability, though other breeds were also considered. These anti-tank dog units were formally incorporated into the Red Army by 1935. Anti-tank dog training was a difficult and dynamic process that eventually saw changes in approach due to major obstacles encountered. The original plan of action for the dogs was to be trained to carry a bomb, place it close to a target, and then return. This method involved the dog pulling a self-releasing belt with its teeth to drop the bomb, which would be detonated by a timer or remote control. However, this proved too complicated for the dogs, especially when the target was moving, leading to dangerous situations where the dogs would return to their handlers with the bomb still attached. This difficulty in training necessitated a shift in approach, leading to a simpler and more direct method of deploying them. The bomb, now designed to detonate upon contact, was permanently attached to the dog, which was trained to run under enemy tanks, a decision that tragically meant the certain death of the dog on each mission. The dogs were trained for this task by keeping them hungry and placing food under tanks to create an association with tanks and the reward of gaining nourishment. Training exercises included stationary tanks at first, then tanks with running engines and eventually tanks on the move amidst blank gunfire intended to acclimatize the dogs to the chaotic environment of the battlefield. A basic knowledge of animal behavior and a willingness to use it for military gain were evident in the design of the mine and the harness, as well as in the training techniques. Every dog was fitted with a harness that held a 12-kilogram mine, which was divided into two canvas bags for comfort and balance. Central to the operation of this system was a wooden lever, about eight inches tall, protruding from a pouch on the harness connected to the detonation mechanism. When a dog dove under a tank, the lever would strike the underbelly of the vehicle, triggering the explosive charge. Compared to the front and sides of an armored vehicle, the undercarriage was comparatively thinly armored, making it more vulnerable to damage from a smaller charge. There would be no turning back once the safety pin was removed, arming the charge just prior to deployment. With no disarming mechanism or markings, these mines were made expressly for this purpose, emphasizing their destructive one-time use. It was hoped that the strategy would not only disable tanks, but also create a psychological impact on enemy forces. Though theoretically highly effective in dealing serious damage to enemy armored units in actual combat conditions, this method would prove unsatisfactory, yielding inconsistent and frequently dubious results. A few months after the war began, in late summer of 1941, 30 dogs and 40 trainers made up the first group of anti-tank dogs sent to the front lines. However, their introduction to actual combat revealed several problems that had not been anticipated during training. A critical flaw in the training process was that the Soviet tanks used in training were diesel-powered, whereas the German tanks operated on gasoline. As dogs naturally rely on their acute sense of smell during hunting, the dogs sought out familiar Soviet vehicles instead of weird-smelling German tanks, leading to friendly fire incidents. The biggest problem was the difference between the training ground and actual combat conditions. Even with the rigorous training program, many dogs found it difficult to function in real-world combat situations. On the battlefield, 
they were faced with maneuvering German tanks actively engaging in combat. As a result of this difference, some dogs, instead of diving under the moving tank, began to run alongside, waiting for them to stop, only to be shot by enemy soldiers. Many of the dogs were scared by the chaos and noise of the battlefield, especially the explosions, and fled back to the Soviet trenches. This occasionally led to disaster, as dogs carrying unexploded bombs back to their own trenches would inadvertently trigger their charges among Soviet soldiers. A policy of shooting returning dogs was put in place to stop these kinds of incidents, which were frequently left to the handlers of the dogs, who had developed strong bonds with them. This had a dire psychological effect on the handlers and created a depressing atmosphere within the canine units. Out of the initial 30 dogs deployed, only a handful successfully detonated their bombs near German tanks. German troops shot three dogs, which were then taken away for analysis, revealing the detonation mechanism. With that knowledge, the German forces modified their tactics to take into account the Soviet anti-tank dog program, despite considering it desperate and inefficient. The dogs were small and fast, making them not only difficult to spot, but also difficult to target. The dogs were too low to the ground for the top-mounted machine gun of an armored vehicle to be effective. To neutralize this unconventional threat, German troops were ordered to shoot any dogs on site in combat areas. A German propaganda campaign sought to discredit the Red Army, saying that Soviet soldiers refused to fight and sent dogs instead. As the fighting on the Eastern Front intensified and the German army moved closer to Moscow, the Soviet Union increased its use of anti-tank dogs, despite the uncertainty of the effectiveness of these attacks. Of the 40,000 dogs used by the Red Army at this time for a variety of tasks, the majority of dog training facilities concentrated on breeding anti-tank dogs. This period was marked by desperate efforts by the Red Army to halt the German panzers at any cost. Despite the setbacks, there were documented instances where anti-tank dogs achieved some measure of success. For instance, near Stalingrad Airport, anti-tank dogs reportedly destroyed a number of German tanks. Dogs were also reported to have disabled multiple tanks that had broken through Soviet lines during the Battle of Kursk. However, the program's overall impracticality and high cost, in terms of both human lives and resources, overshadowed these isolated successes. By late 1942, the use of anti-tank dogs had drastically declined, and by the end of 1943, it had been discontinued altogether as training facilities shifted their focus to sentry and mine detection tasks. This change signaled an increasing awareness of the program's limits and served as a somber reminder of the extremes of military innovation during times of dire need. The overall effectiveness of the anti-tank dogs in World War II remains a subject of debate and scrutiny. Approximately 300 German tanks were allegedly damaged by these dogs, according to Soviet records. These numbers, according to a large number of Russian historians and military analysts, are inflated for propaganda purposes in order to justify the substantial resources allocated to the program. Independent assessments suggest that the actual impact of anti-tank dogs on German armored units was minimal. It is interesting to note that during the Cold War, anti-tank dog training persisted in the Soviet Union until it was ultimately discontinued in June 1996, ending a controversial chapter in military history. The use of animals as disposable weapons, which was an unconventional but ultimately unsuccessful attempt at innovation, was mainly ineffectual and involved unanticipated tactical difficulties when using animals in combat, particularly when the animals had to adjust to constantly shifting and unpredictable battle environments, which can ultimately be regarded as a failure. If you liked this video, there are many similar high-quality videos on my channel.